Hi, Bubbles. I see that you like watching documentaries about animals. Yes, Mrs. Coco. Look at this tiger hunting a deer. Poor deer. She was just going about her normal day, eating some tasty grass. It's amazing how living things depend on each other for food. These feeding relationships are not only amazing, but also play an important role in connecting different organisms in an ecosystem. The grass is eaten by the deer, and the deer is eaten by the tiger. This is how organisms obtain energy. Plants do not feed on any organisms. They make their own food through photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight. Therefore, plants are called producers. All living things depend on plants for their food directly or indirectly, as plants are at the beginning of the food chain. Organisms that cannot make their own food and feed on other organisms are called consumers. There are different levels of consumers. Consumers that feed on plants directly are called primary consumers. Goats, deer, rabbits, and grasshoppers are all examples of primary consumers. Organisms that feed on primary consumers are called secondary consumers. Foxes, Snakes, owls, and cats are examples of secondary consumers. These consumers obtain their energy from plants indirectly. If we put these relationships together, we end up with a chain like this. This feeding relationship between organisms in which one organism eats another and is then eaten by another organism is called a food chain. In a food chain, energy in one organism is transferred to the next organism. Therefore, a food chain also shows the root of energy transfer between organisms. Can you think of an example of a food chain that you have observed? I remember seeing a chicken eating grains, and then the chicken was cooked for dinner the next day. You're right. We're also part of a food chain. Hmm, so a food chain represents one possible path, but in reality, it's not as simple as a chain, right? For instance, chickens feed on other things as well, such as worms, and they get eaten by other animals too, such as snakes. That's a great observation. So, we can, in fact, draw more branches to the food chain and end up with a network where multiple chains overlap. This is called a food web. A food web is a network in which many food chains are interconnected with each other. For example, a lion feeds on goats, deer, jackals, zebras, and many other animals. Jackals can feed on rabbits, birds, insects, and fruits. Goats. Deer and zebras feed on plants. Hmm. So, a food chain represents one possible path in which energy transfers from one organism to another. On the other hand, a food web consists of many food chains. Well done. Let's do a quick exercise. What is the rabbit in the given food chain? Is it a producer, a primary consumer, or a secondary consumer? A rabbit feeds on plants which are producers. It is a herbivore, which means it only eats plants. It is eaten by an eagle, which is a secondary consumer. So, a rabbit is a primary consumer. Time to summarize. Living things depend on each other for food. Organisms can be producers or consumers. Producers make their own food, while consumers cannot make their own food. And so, they depend on another organism for food. A food chain is a feeding relationship between organisms in which energy transfers from one organism to another.
Several food chains interconnected to form a network is called a food web.